Hi, it's Greg, and uh, thanks for letting me into your group life gathering today. I want to talk about the passage from John chapter 6 we, that we dealt with on Sunday uh, in order to help us understand other Bible stories. But if you haven't read it as a group yet, that's John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14. I want you to turn off the video and read it as a group and maybe even throw out your initial questions and ideas about it, and then you can start this up again, okay? Great. I'll give you a pause here to do that. All right. Wonderful. Now you've all read that passage, and I want to talk to you about two things regarding it, because this is, it's one, it's a great story, and it helps us understand a lot of other stories as well. And the two things I want to deal with in it are, first of all, the whole concept of vehicle and cargo, and then the other one is a whole role of numbers in the Bible. Okay, so vehicle and cargo. Uh, here's something we all know well enough. Um, this is a truck, right? In fact, this is a UPS truck, and it does something. I mean, we like UPS trucks to come to our house, but why? Not because we like UPS trucks, but we like what's inside of them, right? We like the cargo that they carry, the boxes, the stuff that we ordered and then they bring to our houses. And uh, so, you know, this is what we're after, right? This is the cargo. This is the box. This is the truck. This is the vehicle. We like the vehicle, but we only like it because... It brings the cargo, right? And, um, you know, and we also know, well, we probably wouldn't get the cargo without the vehicle, but nonetheless, it's about the cargo, right? Okay, the Bible. The stories of the Bible are vehicles. They bring to us messages, things that we're supposed to learn. That's the cargo, all right? We need the stories. We can love the stories. We enjoy the stories. But we look at them. We read them. We try to understand them for this sake, right? For what they're trying to tell us, the message within them. Now, in this story from John chapter 6, the feeding of the 5,000, with, uh, you know, Jesus performing this miracle of multiplying the loaves and the fishes and everything, the vehicle is that story. And in fact, within that story, the vehicle is the miracle. And because that is such a showy one, people get distracted by it. And we, you maybe have found that in your own group. You maybe spent some time already talking about, well, did, did that really happen? And what you're doing is you're arguing out the vehicle. We waste a lot of time and energy. In fact, our faith even gets really kind of off in the wrong direction when we spend a lot of time arguing about the vehicle. The point is, all that stuff and that story is um, a vehicle trying to convey some really important messages to us. So, I'm not trying to say that it, that miracle happened or it didn't happen. What I'm trying to say is, whether it happened or not, it still is bearing the same cargo, the same messages to us. Spend your time digging around with that. You know, it could be a good check on yourselves as a group, asking whether uh, some of your discussion is vehicle-oriented or cargo-oriented. Yeah, it's a good check. So the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is the role of numbers in the Bible. Uh, in the Jewish culture, these numbers had very specific meanings. Some of, the, some of the numbers in the Bible are just numbers, but a lot of them are meant to, they're very loaded. In fact, they're kind of their own little vehicles carrying cargo behind them. We do the same thing in our culture, but not, as, uh, not in such a deliberate fashion. The number I want to focus on in this story is the number 12, uh, which was the number of baskets of leftovers that were collected at the end. So what is 12? 12 is 4 times 3 in Jewish numerology. 4 is the number of the earth. Southeast, Northwest, right? That's the human, the, the number of creation. Um, three is the divine number. And so what do you do? You take the number three, you multiply it times the number four, and you get the number 12. Number 12 is a sense of completion, of wholeness. Uh, 12 disciples, 12 tribes of Israel. It, you know, you find it all over the place. This idea that this is complete, this is full, it's God and come to earth sort of stuff. Um, so you might want to even think about, and I'll have talked about it on Sunday, but what does that number 12 represent? Don't go too crazy with these numbers. Um, they have messages, but they aren't the whole thing either, okay? So have fun with it. You'll find attached to this video a clip from a movie called Millions. It's an Irish film done in 2005. And there you've got uh, an example of where that filmmaker took a story, took the same story of the Feeding the 5,000, and spun it in a way that helps get at what the cargo is rather than the vehicle. So a good thing to kind of inspire your own conversation and you can see how they help you understand this stuff better than maybe you would have on your own. So enjoy it. We'll talk to you again next week. Samaritans.
box. Um, Christy and me. For Christ's sake, don't take them little boxes. The ones about putting you in touch with like-minded organisations. You'd be besieged, man. I'm telling you. St. Peter died AD 64. All oh, right, don't remind us. The money, it's robbed. I know. Patron saint of keys, locks and general security, man. Including up there. I'm on the door. Is it still all right if it's robbed? Can you still do good with it? Or should you give it back? I thought it was a miracle, but it's just robbed. Damien, listen. One day I was with you know who, Jesus. And he went up into the mountains and thousands of people followed him. The police said 5,000. Everybody knows this story. Loaves and fishes. See, I knew you'd say that. That's what everybody says. This yours? It's the key to the old house. Joined at pen tumbler. Engineering perfection. Anyway, this kid comes up to us. About your size. His name was... No, I forgot. I still see him sometimes. Anyway, he comes up with these loaves and fishes, sardines, and Jesus blesses them and passes the plate round. Now, the first person he passes it to, passes it on. He doesn't take anything, he just passes it on. Do you know why? Because he had a piece of lamb hidden in his pocket. And as he's passing the fish, he sneaks a bit of meat out and pretends he's taking it off the plate. Do you see what I'm saying? And the next person, Exactly the same story. Every single bastard, one of them has their own food. And every one of them's keeping it quiet, looking after number one. But as that plate went round with the sardines on, they all got their own food out and started to share. And that, that plate went all the way round and back to Jesus, and it still got the fish and the loaves on it. And Jesus was a bit taken aback. He says, what happened? And I just said, miracle. And at first, I thought I'd fooled him. But now I see it was a miracle. One of his best. But this little kid had stood up and everybody there just got bigger. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? Not really. I'm talking about you. Now I'm really lost. You're trying too hard. That kid, he wasn't planning on doing a miracle. He wasn't planning anything except lunch. Something that looks like a miracle turns out to be dead simple. But what am I going to do with all this? I just want to be good. Look. I can't say too much about this because of that whole free will thing, right? But... See this key? Keep it safe. All right? And I'll have a word upstairs. See if I can get somebody on your case more permanent. This is your